Hi all. In today's video, we are going to see how to update the firmware of an OLT. We are going to update OLT. We connect a LAN cable to the aux port of the OLT other end of the cable will be given to the laptop or computer. After that, below the computer we can see the Wi-Fi or internet connection. Right click on it then click on open network and internet settings. Then click on change adapter option double click on it then click on ethernet then click on properties then click on internet protocol version 4. Then click on use the following IP address. The IP of our OLT is in 8 series. The default IP of our OLT is a GPONOLT so, the default IP for GPONOLT is 192.168.8.200. I am giving 8.15 here. Just click on the subnet mask and it will automatically come. Then just click OK and go back. After clicking OK, close it. Then we can open any web browser. After opening the web browser, enter the OLT IP here. To enter the OLT IP, you need to enter the URL as well. This is the default IP of the OLT, 8.200. Then we will get an interface to type the username and password. Here we will give the username as admin. The default password of the OLT is, xpon at olt9417 hash. After that, the verification code will enter. Submit it. Now we are logged into the web of OLT. First of all, before updating the firmware of OLT, we have to confirm one thing. We have to save all the configurations we have done so far. For that, first of all, come to system configuration. There is a device management option. There is a config file here. Then we can save the configuration from here. Once you click save, then click OK. Otherwise, there is a save button at the top of the window. Click on it and then click on system log and then click on save the configuration. The first step is to save the configuration. Once we have saved all the configurations, at the top of device management, there will be an option called backup configuration. There will be a button called download on the backup configuration side. Once you click on this button, save all the configurations in the OLT so far. Once you click on download, there will be an option called unverified downloads above. Click on download unverified file. Make sure that the backup is saved in the notepad file. Any emergency situations, this backup can be used in OLT. After that, we are going to upgrade the firmware. The currently running software version is V1.3.8R. I have noted it down for you to understand. V1.3.8R is currently running. There is a software called Putty in our computer. If not, it can be easily downloaded from Chrome. Anyway, I have put it here, so I will open it. Then enter the IP address here, 192.168.8.200. Then here, there is an option called Telnet, select it. After that, open it. Log in your OLT username as admin. Enter your password. After that, enter space C space T this is all. This is just to let you know if an update is going on. This is not mandatory. It is not a problem if we don't do it. We can directly update the firmware through the web. Anyway, let's minimize this. After that, if we go to our website, Netlinks website, we can download the firmware of OLT anyway. The OLT I have chosen here is the G0B model of GPONOLT going to website www.netlinkic.com and then select no more option, just select downloads. Now, we can see the firmware of each OLT and ONUS and ONTs. When we choose the firmware, there will be a sticker on the top of the OLT in that sticker, which model is the OLT, whether it is G0B or G1B, first we will identify from that sticker. Only then the firmware will be downloaded. Anyway, my OLT is G0B. So, here I need this firmware. I highlighted GPOW OLT as my firmware. V1, 600, G0B, G1B. So, we can update the same firmware to G0B and G1B. Anyway, to download it, click on the downloader. So, it will be a window like this. At the top, we can see a download arrow. We can click on it. So, our file will be downloaded to our downloads. Ok, now our file is being downloaded. Ok, the download is complete. So, close that tab. Once you have downloaded the file, come to system configuration. Here, there is an option called device management. Come to device management. Then, click on the choose file option here. 
When you click on choose file, you can see the downloaded file here in downloads. So, select that file. Open it. Open Putty interface and placed in right side of the screen. Now we can see that the file is updated. We have already uploaded the file once, so let's minimize it. Then, just go back and select the same file and open it. Because, we have to upload the same file twice to update the file. So, we have to select and upload the same file. Then again, we have to open it in the same way. Again, the page is blank. The web interface of OLT is just blank. So, we can see the step of updating input T. The second file is being uploaded. We have uploaded the same file twice. Now, we can close the putty. Then, press the go back button. After that, there is an option called device reboot. We have to reboot the OLT after the device reboots. Only after rebooting, the firmware update will be completed. So, that's why we said before the firmware update, we have to save all the configurations. If possible, we have to download a backup. Then, click on Reboot. Click OK. Now, we can see that the OLT light is blinking. That means the OLT is rebooting. So, one minute above, we will get a reboot. At that time, we can put a ping. So, we can know whether the OLT is being pinged or not. For that, click at the start. Type CMD. A black color window will appear. Open command prompt. Here, just ping 192.168.8.200 then space hyphen small letter T. Enter it. It is showing as destination host unreachable i.e. it is rebooting from timeout. This is also not mandatory. We are just checking the ping to know whether it is rebooting or not. Reply from 192.168.8.200 as well as time ms value as well as ttl equal to 64 then minimize it. Refresh the web interface and log in to LT again. Now, let us see which is the software version. It is version 1.4.3 R. Let us see which is the first firmware. We had already copied it in notepad. Now, version 1.3 has been updated to v4. The first firmware was version 1.3.8 R. This is how we have updated the web interface through a royalty firmware. Then again, if we have any customers, we can check the configuration and then log out.